first of all i wanted like just thank everyone for coming here for this session um and also a big shout out for all the guys who are going to he come here and start learning about cryptocurrency so hi um what's up now what we're going to do today is just quickly right we're going to talk about cryptocurrency we're going to understand the history of cryptocurrency i'm going to show you the different type of patterns that are currently emerging in this now this is for all the people who are still new with the cryptocurrency trend and i try to understand how cryptocurrency works right so i prepared a quick uh, presentation that i'm going to show you guys and what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep a lot of time in the end to take up any questions that you might have with respect to cryptocurrency right the reason why i'm doing that is because cryptocurrency is slightly complicated uh, term not many people understand it on 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 get go so i want to actually take more time on that okay so i'm just going to quickly share my screen and then we'll begin just give me a sec Yes, don't worry. I'll keep going through different uh, patterns as well. Just tell me if you guys can see my screen. Okay, awesome. Just give me a second. Awesome, guys. So let's begin. So today we're going to try to find easy ways uh, on finding the right cryptocurrency, right? And why I say this is because cryptocurrency is a very complicated topic, and trying to find the good ones out of the meme coins or out of all those uh, you know coins that are just keep going up and down we need to find what are good projects and how we can invest in these projects for a very long period of time now this is only for educational purposes whatever coins that i'm mentioning here is not a buying or selling recommendation it's only to teach you how to look at coins in a different way or how to look at cryptocurrency projects in a different way right so let's quickly understand that now the agenda for today is very simple we're going to talk about the history of winning cryptocurrencies in the past right we're going to analyze different cryptocurrency trends and its correlations with coins as well uh, we're going to do some mindset training for cryptocurrency and i'll tell you why mindset training is super important seven step guide to finding the right cryptocurrency and i've actually included a little bit more um, and i'm going to also also going to show you some resources at the end if you are trying to understand the crypto space what are some key tools that you need to use so i'm going to show all of this to you guys now i'm going to keep this session very interactive because i want to talk to you guys as well and understand from your perspective so there are some cryptocurrencies that have won in the past some of them are quite new for example if you look at bitcoin ethereum and binance coin right the ones on the top extreme right they rank 1 rank 2 and rank 4 right so these coins are obviously one of the best coins in the market right now and have they have been growing but there are other coins that are currently growing right now which is decentraland at 33 and ftx token at 27 now i want to ask you guys in the chat what is common in all of them do you guys know what is that common underlying factor uh, that leads these coins to become big coins or become number 1 number 2 why are they number 1 why are they number 1 number 2 number 3 why are these coins sitting at the top of the top 100 coins right now what is that exact use case that is making it awesome and they all have a similar use case now there's, yes there are some nice answers coming saying exchange some something called hype platform so okay let me answer one question very quickly right hype se jo coin upar jata hai whatever coin goes up with respect to hype is a hype is a very short lived coin okay so whatever goes up with hype will also come down in the same speed so this is like 101 on cryptocurrency if something is hyped up don't put your hands in that because you will more likely or not lose the money right though for example if i give you an example if you remember elon musk was one point of time tweeting about doge coin right everyone is tweeting remember the doge coin phase right just before the shiba inu phase now doge coin is basically a meme coin that had no value okay zero value zero underlying uh, possibility on that but it kept going up because elon musk tweeted about it but do you know that it went up and then fell down at the same speed and all the people who bought in the fomo or bought after the fomo actually ended up losing a lot of money so i would suggest if it's a meme coin or if it is just because of hype please stay one step away from them okay so some good questions some people are saying market cap some people are saying platform exchange okay let me tell you what is common in finding the right cryptocurrency or finding the winners that you need to find right now the first thing is global adoption right now just understand this all the coins okay understand it from a very grassroots level all the coins that are coming in the space right now each and every coin that is launched all the new coins that are coming so in the cryptocurrency universe a new coin offering is called ico like in the real world we have ipos we have icos in the crypto world now a coin is deemed successful when there is adoption okay so when the ipo if you look at any company that's done ipo they already have operations going on right they already have revenue coming in they already have customers they already have clients but when a new coin comes out they have nothing right they're brand new it's like a newborn baby right 
Now, the only way they become famous or they start becoming uh, one of the top coins in the market is when they get proper adoption that people start using it. But why will people start using it? They're not stupid, right? People will only use it if there is a proper utility. Utility means it stands for something. Now, there are different types of cryptocurrencies that stand for different kind of things. For example, if you look at this slide as well, Decentraland is a metaverse cryptocurrency. It stands for the metaverse, right? FTX token is basically on the exchange side. BNB is on the exchange side. Ethereum is a smart contract utility. That is why Ethereum is famous. And Bitcoin is like our USD dollar, right? It is like the father coin. So everything is pegged to the Bitcoin as well. But utility, not there right now. Nothing's there. It's just there because it was number one. Now, good token economics. Now, what is token, token economics or tokenomics as they call it, right? Now, every token, every coin that is launched, say, for example, Decentraland, say, Ethereum, say, BNB, say, Bitcoin, all of these coins are, there's a certain number of supply. Okay, I'm going to link it to the stock market so it's easy for a lot of people to understand. So, you know that when a company is listed in the stock market, there are a number of shares in the market, outstanding shares, it's called, but the number of shares. Say 100 shares are there. Now, if 100 shares are there and 200 people want this 100 shares, the demand for it is obviously higher and the token price goes up. Now, what if this token is instead of 100 has now become 1000, right? Then it is very difficult to fulfill the demand. What if it becomes 10,000, 15,000, 1 billion? There's even tokens that have 1 billion uh, coins in circulation, right? So whenever a lot of coins are in circulation, ideally, it is not considered a good thing, right? We need to understand tokenomics and I'll talk a little bit more about it and I'll show you some examples as well. So whenever a lot of tokens are there, it is a problem. Now, there are tokens that are programmed in a way where it's inflationary or deflationary. Inflationary means every year new tokens are minted into existence for example ethereum is an inflationary token right so not that means the demand has to be higher than the rate of inflation that is going on in the ethereum market whereas someone some other coins are doing a buyback burning concept so they're deflationary in nature that means over a long period of time with more adoption the price keeps going up because the number of tokens reduce so for example binance coin which is bnb has a system where they burn the tokens or buy back the tokens. So over a long period of time, the price of the tokens go up automatically because the number of tokens reduce, right? Another very important trend that is there in the history of winning cryptocurrency is trends, right? Now, the why I'm saying global trends are very important because see, Decentraland was there from a very long period of time. It was there from the last two, three years. Nobody spoke about Decentraland. There were so many Metaverse tokens before Metaverse was even a thing. But what happened is suddenly Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg got up one day and said Metaverse is the next future and made this awesome video. And then everyone started talking about Metaverse. And suddenly this Decentraland token that was already there started doing really well. Same with Sandbox, right? They were already there. It was not some new token that got launched right now. But because the global trend supported it, it started going up. Same way there was another example in 2016 when banking transactions were being used a lot in the blockchain universe. There was a token called Ripple, XRP Ripple. So Ripple was trending at that point and it was doing really well. But now look at Ripple. Nobody cares about it so much because the trend is now into NFTs and Decentraland type tokens and you know Metaverse and all that, right? Now, another very important factor is also platform interoperability, right? Now, you understand that more adoption means more token. The token is a winning token. The more adoption, the more it wins, right? Now, if the token can also go across blockchains, or if the token can be used for different variety of reasons, like Ethereum can be used for NFTs as well, can be used to start your own project as well, can be used to start your, uh, say, for example, your any smart contract that you want to do, whether it's a private or a public smart contract. But now there are companies coming or there are blockchains coming where they're saying we will go into different blockchains. We will tie up with different blockchains and we will do a swap between them. Now, currently what is happening, I'll make it simple terms, right? If there is some coin on the Ethereum blockchain, okay, if there are two different blockchains right now, okay, you need a third party to exchange this. So if there's blockchain one and blockchain two, then both of them have to go to an exchange and then you get the new token. Now, this is a very time consuming process because I have to send money from here to that exchange. And then it's my gas fee or transaction fee goes away. Then exchange may exchange after doing the exchange, they take their own fees. And after that, I have to again transfer it back to my other wallet, which is the other blockchain. Again, there is a gas fee or a transaction fee happening. So it's very expensive. Now what people are designing and it's still not done. A lot of people are trying like Solana is doing the wormhole project. Uh, AVAX is doing uh, something else as well. What they're planning to do right now is an interoperability process where Ethereum tokens can interact with some other token, can interact with some other blockchain, and it can be done seamlessly in a matter of seconds. So what is happening is basically the ecosystem is developing and becoming more advanced.
right? So this is how you find good tokens. These few traits or these few things are very important when it comes to finding the right cryptocurrency. Now, this is a very interesting slide. Okay. The Bitcoin is like the father coin, right? And then everything else is below it, right? But there is something that we should observe with respect to cryptocurrency trends. And I don't know how many of you have seen this. Can someone see the pattern here? Can someone identify a pattern? I want to see in the chat who identifies a pattern. Is there any, what's the difference or what's the similarity in both the patterns? Can someone tell me? Is it, is it, is it, the, is it look, does it look like a same chart or is it some different chart that I'm showing you? So you see that both Bitcoin and Ethereum, their chart patterns are very similar, right? And this is all over time, over time, right? Bitcoin obviously launched before Ethereum, but after Ethereum launched, it looks very similar. See, for example, in this 2017-18 phase, see how this pattern was there. Same way in 2017-18 phase as a similar small pattern. Then you see that Bitcoin rallied up first in 2020 and then Ethereum rallied up again and then Bitcoin fell and then Ethereum fell. Now, what this basically says is that whenever Bitcoin is in a bull run, you will see all other coins in a bull run, which is very weird, right? So in the stock market, that's not the case, right? In the stock market, that's not the case. If Infosys goes up, doesn't mean TCS has to go up or doesn't mean some other coin which has no relation with Infosys will go up. But isme aisa nahi hai. the cryptocurrency market is very weird and difficult uh, and somewhat uh, if you're new to it, you will not understand it very clearly. But Bitcoin ka rally, the Bitcoin's movement determines all other coins movement. Okay, please understand that if Bitcoin is going to go up, then all the other coins are going to go up along with it. If Bitcoin goes down, all the other co coins go down. Unless there is some extracurricular activity that some coin has done, let's say they launch something and then it will outperform the market. But apart from that, it is correlation. Now, very good question that has been asked by Abhishek, Ajay and Avish, right? What is the correlation or what is the logic between these things? Now, let me tell you, for this, you need to understand how money flows in the cryptocurrency universe. Okay, how does money flow? Uh, and there's also a very weird thing I'll show you after this. Okay, just give me a sec. I'll answer that question. I'm going to show you a relation between Bitcoin and not Ethereum, but another coin called Binance coin. Look at the correlation again with Binance coin. Again, very similar, right? Whenever Bitcoin is going low, this is going low. Whenever Bitcoin is going high, going high. So I'll tell you what happens. Understand the flow of how money works in the cryptocurrency universe. Assume that new money is coming in. So like say FII or foreign institutions or hedge funds or say Shashank Gurupa is investing, right? What is happening is whenever the new money is coming from the traditional market to the cryptocurrency market, the first thing people invest in is Bitcoin, Ethereum and whatever the top three, top four coins is what they invest in. The first money that goes in. So if you see a lot of hedge funds buy Bitcoin, a lot of uh, big companies buy Ethereum. Now you'll ask me, why is this? Why is this the case, right? Why are people buying Bitcoin and Ethereum? Uh, that's because the risk element here is slightly lower. Now, you know that cryptocurrency is a very high risk engagement, right? It is very volatile, very risky, but Bitcoin is considered slightly safer. Ethereum is considered slightly safer. So what happens is most of the money that comes, the top money, like 60, 70% of the money goes into the top coins, which is Bitcoin, Ethereum and all that. Okay. And it slowly flows down. So majority of the money is on the top in the top five coins. And then it slowly slows down. So if I have thousand dollars tomorrow, assume I have thousand dollars, $800 or $700 of that money is going to be in Bitcoin and Ethereum remaining $300. I will put into say meme coins or I will put into coins that are very small that have this chance of going up. Right? So what happens is whenever a bull run is going on, okay. Assume tomorrow there's a massive bull run happening. Shashank Kodupa, what will he do first thing? I'd be like, boss, I'm going to buy Bitcoin and Ethereum ASAP, right? Because bull run is going on. And if bull run happens, that means Bitcoin and Ethereum are like the top two coins of the cryptocurrency universe in the world. They have to go up. So everyone's investing in the top two coins, right? And then agar thoda paisa bachte, I will put it in the lower coins, right? And then the, if the market is going to crash, then if I have to pull out my money, what do I pull out? I pull out Bitcoin and I pull out Ethereum. So why the correlation is so similar is because people are not just investing all their resources in Bitcoin. They spread their money almost evenly with the top five coins. That is why you see that whenever someone's investing money, all five go up in a similar fashion. And when people are removing the money, all five go down in a similar fashion. Now, whenever a bull run happens, right? Now, the very good question, Abhishek. I was just coming to that. How does the correlation look beyond top 10 coins? Now, when the bull run goes on, assume the bull run started today, right? Uh, say today is Jan 1st. Now, there are other coins called alt coins or alternate coins, which are not in the top 10. Let's say these are 50, top, 50 and below coins, right? 
Jan first is the bull run. You will see that the lower coins usually after fifteen to thirty days they will start altcoin bull run. They don't start on day one. First fifteen days you will only see Bitcoin Ethereum rallying and the other coins you'll not see them going as much as fast as possible. Why is that the case? Is because what happens is when Bitcoin Ethereum starts going up in this massive bull run, uh, other coins are going up slowly because as I said, money trickles down at this point, right? And after ten fifteen days when people start doing profit booking. right they start investing in the oil coins and the oil coins start going start doing a rally but when a market crash happens both bitcoin ethereum and the bottom coins will fall significantly so it, it is all about where the money is flowing you need to understand the water and the flow of money and who is taking most of it so if you actually see the money being invested in the cryptocurrency market most of the money is being invested in the bitcoin ethereum and this and i'll show you how to understand that as well right i'll show you how to understand that as well so you understood this much basic stuff you understood right now before i come to mindset training let me open this and show you so this is a website called coin market cap coin market cap basically gives you a lot of information about the different type of coins that are there with respect to categories okay now if you open coin market cap and see it properly look at this the entire cryptocurrency market cap right now is currently this much right it's around 1850 this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so it's 1.85 trillion almost right it's 1850 billion dollar market right now the entire cryptocurrency market cap right and the total number of cryptos that are there in existence is 18864 and if you look at the 24 hour volume it is approximately 80 billion dollars right now 24 hours mein 80 billion dollars ka volume has been traded now look at this the dominance dominance means where who is dominating the entire cryptocurrency market bitcoin has a dominance of 40.9% and ethereum has a dominance of 20% right so out of the entire global cryptocurrency market cap 40% of the money is currently in bitcoin right with respect to market cap and 19.6 is with ethereum so almost 60% has been eroded by the top two and the remaining goes lower so the money slowly flows into the other things right this is what this is what i was trying to explain to you most of the money is in bitcoin right now and it continues to remain so for a very long period of time now if bitcoin goes down like this everything is going down in a similar fashion so if the market's red today because of bitcoin everything starts looking bad look at this unless there's some anomaly that's happening now if i click on say bitcoin right you will see the top 24 hour volume okay so i'm coming down here volume is basically where the money flows right kitna paisa move ho raha hai market mein is what the volume is so you will see according to what all exchanges the money is flowing and apart from exchanges you will also see the price change you will also see the trading volume which is this right so 27 billion dollars in trading volume in last 24 hours now if i go here and check the volume with respect to the highest volume the usdt is are different but after that bitcoin is again the highest 27 billion second is ethereum third now currently is bitcoin cash in the last 24 hours so that means there's something happening in bitcoin cash right now and then there is shiba inu because of the meme trend that's happening it's trending a lot so now you understand where the money is flowing right now but most of the money flows in the top layer which is bitcoin ethereum the top five coins as i would call it they flow in this region right now okay this is how it looks number one this is giving you an example of how this works now if you look at bitcoin let me show you some interesting factors here right the total number of coins is very important What is the max supply of Bitcoin? Twenty-one million coins. Very simple. What is the total supply currently? Nineteen million is currently trading in the market, and the max supply is only twenty-one million coins. So the number of people who want Bitcoin is much more than twenty-one million. So that is why the demand is more, supply is less, so the price goes up like this, right? So this shows you the market cap. Market cap is nothing but the amount of Bitcoin into the circulating supply, right? So it also shows you the market cap right now, and assuming the entire market cap max supply of tokens come out. This is how the fully diluted market cap will look like. So these tokens, two million tokens, are yet to be released in the market. They are not released in the market yet. So this is yet to come out. Got it? Any questions, guys? Please keep keep putting it. I'm going to take it as we go as well. Right? It's almost. Uh, then I'll open the round for questions. So this is how it looks. So very important to look at circulating supply. Now, Bitcoin is neither inflationary nor deflationary. Bitcoin is a uh the coin system is very fixed it's a fixed market cap so they have 21 million that's all it's not going to go more than 21 million so it's fixed whereas if you look at ethereum ethereum is an inflationary token so look at this the max supply is not there why because the max supply changes every time every year there's more tokens being pumped into the system 
So the total supply currently is 120 million, right? If you look at it, it's 120 million circulating ETH, but it keeps going up, right? It won't, it won't stop the max supply. It's an inflationary token right now. Whereas B Binance coin, if you look at it, is a deflationary token. So currently the total number of tokens that are already there is 1 lakh, 1, 1 uh, 165 million, but it keeps going down. It was much more before. It keeps burning and going down. So it's very important to understand all of this as well while you're evaluating this, okay? Now, coming to the document again. Now, how many of you all think cryptocurrency trading is fun, easy, and nice, okay? And you think Bitcoin is safe? It is not safe at all. I'll tell you why it's not safe. Because Bitcoin, if you remember the 2017-2018 rally that happened in Bitcoin, right? And if you are investing in Bitcoin, look at this. In 2017, the Bitcoin was trading somewhere between 700 to 800. Went from almost $1,000, went up to $20,000 in a span of one year. One year, it went up 20 times. Massive rally. Okay, and this was all kicked in with greed, 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 lot of greed. Any logical person would have seen this rally and said, boss, this is too much. This is the time to exit. So all the people who didn't exit obviously got trapped. I know people, my personal friends who had bought at 16,000, who had bought at 18,000, right? And they got stuck. The After that, the cryptocurrency market actually went up so much and actually fell down massively, right? fell down massive at that point and then again started going up right now recently right so if i show you on on the other terms instead of this let me show you how it looks at from this perspective right let me go here if i click on bitcoin this is the bitcoin price if i do the last one year's price it looks like this if i do all time pricing it looks like this right so in this point i'm just showing you this range i'm not showing you this range i'm just showing you this range so now if you zoom out it looks so inconsequential you're like dude it, it's barely anything right but if I actually check it only from that perspective of what happened in 2018 to 2019, there was a massive dip. The massive dip was $20,000 to $4,000. It was an 80% dip, right? And you would have been like, dude, this is the most riskiest thing. What do I do? Panic sell. You're down 80% of whatever you put, right? And all the people who held on after that, it went up from the same 10,000 price. It went back up to 50,000. So all the people who held it at this point eventually ended up making money, right? Because it went from... $2,000 to almost $20,000, 10x is the jump. But look at the, look at the volatility is what I'm saying. Have you ever seen a coin or have you ever seen a stock that goes up and then falls down by 80% and then again goes up by 500x, 600x. Even if you look at here, it hit, hit a peak of 60,000 and then came down to 30,000. Straight away 50% 50, 50 loss if you had bought at the peak here, right? So what I'm trying to say is basically that cryptocurrency is extremely volatile. Okay, it is not like your stock trading where you have upper circuit, lower circuit. There is no upper circuit, lower circuit in the crypto market. Crypto market is open 24 7, 365 days. You'll be sleeping and you won't even know that the crypto crash has happened and the crash would have been 30x, 30%, 40%, 50%. And overnight, your thing would have been gone down, right? Now, all this is only, only happens when you're greedy, when you're looking at hype and you're doing hype investing. Oh, yes, the bull run is going on. I'm going to invest for hype. If you invest for long term, you would have seen that you would have been slightly safer, right? If you had invested in long term, you would have made your money. But you had to wait from 2018 to 2021. Three years, if you had waited, you would have come back to break even. So please understand whenever the market is too hot and too good to be true, then that is not the time for you to buy. That is a time for you to look and wait. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. Now, how do you avoid this? And by the way, investing in the cryptocurrency market is no easy task, right? It, it's, it's, it hurts because it's also difficult and you need to train your mind to do that. You need to, what you need to do is you will lose money in the short term. If you're doing short term trading, if you're saying I'm going to invest now and remove it after 10 days, very, very, very high chance you lose all your money. Very, 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 very high chance you lose all your money, right? So don't invest in the short term. I would say invest in the long term. So for example, if you look at another coin, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, this is a personal experience. I lost some money on this as well, right? If you look at Solana, I'm just showing you the last one year, it was at $250 and I bought it at approximately $200 I bought in, right? It's at $250. And from $250, it's come, it went down to almost $80, doing a massive fall, more than 50%. And now it's currently trading at 100, which is still 60% down. Right? And I have to now wait. Now, I don't know how long to wait. Maybe I'll have to wait for a very long time. Maybe after 10 years, it'll go up. But that is the thing. Or you sell and walk away. So if you're in the short-term game, you might lose money a lot. So it's okay if you do that. Uh, but if you're thinking about the long-term play, then it's fine. You have to update yourself with the changing trends. So for example, Decentraland, Metaverse, Sandbox, all of them rallied, massive rally, right? 
uh, do your own research before investing in any of this because you need to do a lot of research and i'll tell you what are the different things you need to do research on and people also assume that you know what in cryptocurrency i'm going to put a stop loss 50 60% down ja rahe so what can you put you cannot put a stop loss to this right it's going down by 60 70% how can you put a stop loss it is not possible because market moves up and down 10 15% in a day so it's highly volatile very 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 volatile so i would say take small wins now what do i mean by take small wins you made 20% you made 30% if you're doing short term trading i'm not talking about long term trading make 10 for 15% be very happy if you can beat the stock market and you make some money here be very happy why because stock market gives you 11 to 13% sensex itself you are banking on india's economy so anything above that is considered a, a, a higher possibility of you making money and the stock market is i mean if you look at the crypto market it is giving you more returns why because it's also very risky it's volatile so you are adding this additional risk layer to make more money so be very careful about that and take some small wins now how do you do your own research very important to understand couple of things here couple of things you need to check is that every company as i said every coin that gets released gets released um, with people there needs to be adoption if there's no adoption there's no fun in the projects right now how do you understand adoption how do you know whether the project is good or bad you need to check the discord okay so most of these guys have discord communities go check the size of it the way you come to know whether a project is trending or not is to check the discord and telegram group sometimes if the telegram group is 50000 75000 people in the telegram group then it is a good project right because a lot of people are now talking about it if it's 500 members in the telegram group this pro- your project that you found is not going to do anything it's useless i think solana has around 35000 people in the telegram group that means it's good you need to check the team's credibility and backing but this i wouldn't go too deep into it right the reason why i wouldn't check the team's credibility and backing this is an optional bonus thing is because most of the guys who come in the crypto space you have not even heard of them like vitalik buterin had come when he was 19 20 years of age right how can you do team and credibility analysis for him but if someone big comes into the space like for example uh, youtube's founder has started a new project in the crypto space called tita labs uh, mozilla firefox's founder has started brave lab brave browser right so now those guys i can be like wow these are damn good founders they've done it in the past so i can take a bet on them because they are more to lose than me right they have the credibility to lose that is there uh try to do some analysis on and the tokenomics by as i said if it's inflationary then your price won't go up if it's deflationary your price will stay low and a lot of people ask me this question now let me show you a very important thing right now let me go to some meme coin ek minute so shiba inu actually not even shiba inu let me find doge coin see doge coin is very doge coin go let me show you something right and i'll tell you why a lot of people look at this this is doge coin now everyone's telling Hey guys, when Doge coin, when Moon, right? When will it go to one dollar? It'll. So your idea when you are investing, you are thinking this is zero point one three dollars. I will invest today and it will become one dollar. I'll become a millionaire. Very good idea, right? Possible. But I'll tell you what. Look at the market circulating supply. One hundred thirty two billion Doge coins are there. That's not even the worst part. The worst part is it's currently trading at a market cap of eighteen billion. Fine, no issues. Eighteen billion dollar market cap right now. So if for this has to go up to one dollar. let's say it has to go up 10 times if this goes up by 10 times then the market cap goes up by 10 times so 18 dollars has to become how much 180 billion dollars 80 18 billion has to become 180 billion dollar market cap let's go back to the main page who is currently at 180 billion dollar market cap let's see the the only person 770 billion dollars is crypt, bitcoin ethereum after that there's no 180 billion so you're saying for doge coin to become a 1 dollar market cap company it has to become number 3 in the space right so don't just make assumptions in the air saying that you know it's so cheap and i'm going to buy it it'll become 10x it can't become 10x because it has to become the top 3 in today's date now it can become 10x maybe after 10 years because the entire market size is also growing right but thinking that oh, i'm going to invest right now this will become very big you please understand that that's a token economics is very important so if i go to some smaller token let's go to metaverse let's say for example i am looking at um, some smaller token i'm just giving an example right say for example yield gilded games i'm just taking a quick example now yield gilded games is currently trading at 2 dollars great the total market cap of this company is 253 million million not even 1 billion right uh, and the total ma- market cap they have is approximately 1 billion right now so if all of it comes out only 11% is trading even if all of it comes out and it's still at 2 dollars then it would be 2.24 into 1 billion which is 2.24 billion dollar market cap now currently only 250 million is in trading 
So if I buy today and all of these remaining things get unlocked, the market will be flooded with more coins and demand might not be there. And the price of 2.24 will go down to one or 1.5 or maybe even less than $1. So that is a big issue. So try to find coins that have already come close to their maximum supply. So you don't get problem with this. And also try to find coins that have a potential to go up to a $1 billion market cap. Only then you can play that into 100x game. Or else there's no point. Look at this. For example, there's engine coin, which has almost done with the circulating supply, right? Almost everything's done. So engine coin, $1.58, $1.3 billion market cap. For this to go 10 times, this has to only become $13 billion market cap. $13 billion market cap looks, if you go down, it's somewhere in 11th or 12th position. At least believable, at least possible and believable. So that's how you look at stuff, right? So don't look at Dogecoin and say, I'm going to become a multimillionaire and this is going to, Solana is going to go up to $1,000. For that to go up to $1,000, it has to literally come close to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Very difficult, right? So keep an eye out on all of this. Now, apart from tokenomics, that's why tokenomics is very important, right? Apart from tokenomics, there's something called white paper. Now, white paper is something which is basically the IPO document. You can read their white paper and understand what is going on. Uh, the technology behind it, is the technology actually useful? Is it a good coin? Is, are they actually solving a particular problem or is it just doing some time pass, right? Look at the history of the price. Is it only in a downward trend or an upward trend or it's not moved as well? Adoption, very important. Who's talking about it? Try to find all the watering holes and I'll show you where you can go and keep yourself uh, up to date with what's happening in the market. And look at the market cap as I showed you because higher market cap means 10x possibility is lower. Lower market cap, your 10x possibility is higher. But understand how many shares are going to be unlocked. That is a big issue, right? Let me show you some tools. Now, if you want to deal in NFTs, if you're looking at NFTs as a game, right? Rarity tools is something you can look at, right? Let me show you Rarity. This is how Rarity tools look. So rarity tools, what happens is they have all the collections of NFT and they basically rank it according to the rarity of the NFTs, right? So for example, Board Ape Yacht Club, if I click on, which is number two right now in the entire NFT space, it'll show you what is number one rank, number two rank, number three rank, and how much it's being sold for as well, right? This is being sold for 2,888 Ethereum, which is insane. 1,333 Ethereum. This is number one right now, right? Board Ape. How is it determined as number one, number two, number three? All of the NFTs have some traits. They have unique characteristics. Okay, all of them are supposedly unique. Uh, apart from that, this is also good for NFTs because it also shows me the upcoming NFT calendar. So what I usually do when I have to find some good NFTs that are coming up soon, I go through, this is yesterday's sales, so I don't care about yesterday's sales. I go to tomorrow's sales. I'm going to check who are, what is happening tomorrow. So you see all these projects that are here. What I do is I check their Discord and I check their Twitter and I see if it is a lot of people are there in this. If a lot of people are there, then the chances are that it might be better. But be careful because there is something called as a rug pull. Rug pull is you invest in a token or you invest in an NFT and the people just pull the rug below. Pull the rug below, matlab, they will just switch off the product, take all your money and run away and you can't complain to anyone. I've been rug pulled three times. So that is why investing in good projects that are already listed makes sense. Or if someone like Gary Vee is coming out of his own project, it's better. Because some project called Stubborn Ape Society, I don't know. Right? So my risk here is extremely high that they can just come and walk away tomorrow. Patani. So try to see if you can get a good backing. So Rarity Tools is very important. Etherscan is good if you want to analyze Ethereum charts. So this is the entire Ethereum blockchain, how, how it works, the price fluctuation. Ethereum supply, as I said, it's an inflationary token. So you can check here how it's been inflation. It's going up over time. Look at this, how the Ethereum supply is also increasing over time. And you'll see that it's increasing quite a bit. It's not a slow increase. It's actually a quite a fast increase. So you need to look at this as well. So Ethereum, uh, Etherscan's charts is also very good to look at. All the number of adoption. So this is adoption, right? Ethereum unique addresses. How many unique addresses are being created? Look at this. This is called adoption. So you can keep looking at all the things that are happening. You can see uh, what are the Ethereum being burnt right now. And you can do a lot of research on that. Cool. Then we have OpenSea. OpenSea is basically a place where you can buy and sell NFTs. So I usually come here and check the rankings. Ranking is like top to bottom con who's doing really well. So currently mourned by John Cornella. By the way, I, you guys know John Cornella, right? This guy is actually a very famous guy on Instagram who does all these weird uh, images, right? I don't know if you've seen this on Instagram. So he basically came out with his own NFT. It's currently trading at 1.2 Ethereum right now. So this is the John Cornella NFT. Imagine that. And how much he's made? Uh, 8,000 Ethereum has been traded in this and he gets a cut on it also. It's crazy, right? Uh, so apart from that, you'll see all the other ones with respect to ranking. So if I just do ranking, you'll see 
all these different things. So you know, you can come and check out NFTs. So this is where you can check out NFTs and buy and sell if required. Apart from that, coin market cap I've shown you. Now, if you want news websites, I recommend two websites. I use this as well to read a lot. One is Coin Telegraph. So Coin Telegraph basically comes out with amazing news that is up to date with what is happening um, in the space, right? So it look at stable coins. It look at Ape Coin. Ape Coin is basically something about uh, the Ape token that is there currently, which is Board Ape Yacht Club's token. It says uh, Robinhood is planning to list it, so it might go up. So you'll just look at all of these things, right? Good, good news articles come here. Coin Desk is the second one again, slightly different from Coin. This one. But again, this shows you all that these two, if you start reading these two on a daily basis, you'll gain a lot of knowledge or else it'll be difficult for you to understand, right? So you'll start gaining knowledge slowly, but steadily. Got it? So what is that ape coin or somewhere, say, for example, here, right? So this is basically coming up. So you'll see automatically it's gone up by 5% already today. Cool. So this is basically the top tools that you should definitely use. And that's it. Basically, this was the entire quick session. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take questions and answers as much as possible.